writer of Singapore, um, one of the most spectacular, the, the amazing <laughs> big, big writer <laughs> The amazing writer for 251. Correct. So I'm going to ask you one question uh, to start off with. How do you feel about the process now, halfway through your production? Oh, right now I am actually really satisfied because we finally, on sa after the Thursday performance, after the Friday performance, we finally on Saturday had a performance which actually met the director and my standards for good theatre. You see, I'm a critic. I mean, you know, I write the theatre reviews for Flying Inkpot, so I'm damn, yeah, I, I'm damn picky, I guess. Not just picky, I, you know, I, I feel this duty after I've slammed so many other theatre productions not to be bad myself. And Thursday I was going, oh my God, this is quite bad. Okay, actually redeemable, but still not very good. And then, and then finally, it was decent today, and I was so surprised. I, I mean, but I, I still actually. Um, so yeah, the reason why I'm so relieved actually is because so much hype went up um, around two five one, uh, that a lot of people said we were just exploiting Annabelle Chong all over again. We're just conning the public into, yeah, thinking that this this show is just full of sex and, uh, and. Um, well, Loretta justified that by saying, you know, we're going to tell to get the common man to buy seats, and then after that, we're gonna we're gonna transmit ideas of higher art and uh, theatre to them. And uh, I wasn't sure we were doing that until today. So right now, I am quite pleased. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And our guest uh, interviewer today, do you have any questions for the director? Yeah. Well, generally, most people would associate Annabelle, Ch Annabelle Chong with Sex X, so maybe you might want to create a new idea for this whole play so that people might have a different impression on it. Thank you. Well, hello, Annabelle Chong, um, her existence in the Singapore consciousness is about sex, is, does have to do with sex, and Annabelle Chong, I mean, it's a stage name. It's the stage name of a porn star. What it ha this is a play about sex as well. I mean, there's, there's no denying it. It's got to be about sex. But um, one, thing, one thing that I wanted to underscore is that sex, sex isn't dirty. I don't think, 
porno there's anything wrong yeah. with pornography either. I mean, you know, I've got loads of it at home in like all formats. Got JPEG, got like book, got um, got um, movie file, got DVD, uh, got comic book. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. But what I one one other thing I wanted to talk about in the within in the play was that Grace Quirk, um, you know, who is that's the real name of the woman who was. Uh, play, uh, who became Annabelle Chong. Mm -hmm. Grace Quirk actually saw herself as an artist. Uh, she, the reason why she went to the USA was to study art. I mean, she had, uh, and when she was in the U.S. Uh, and uh, she couldn't finance her studies at first because her parents cut, her, cut off her uh, education money. So that was why she started um, doing porn shoots. In fact, uh, she was at UCLA, uh, um, I think a br branch of UCLA, which actually saw her, uh, which, which was actually quite, um, no, it was USC, University of Southern California. Yeah. They saw her art, which was exploring female sexuality, as pornographic. And that was actually one of the reasons why she decided that you know, she thought, you know, she might as well do porn. And in fact, um, some of the porn she did, you can, you can see this, this subversive uh, um, artistic element in it, really. I mean, even though... Uh, even though the um, gangbang itself was her director's idea and so it was big, um, full of sleaze, she actually she uh, asked for it to be put, staged in this um, ancient Roman context with these uh, Roman, col uh, Roman columns to recall um, uh, the Empress Messalina, who uh, was a notorious gangbanger of ancient Rome as a, an icon of, um, of positive female um, sexuality. She was... Um, uh, yeah, she, uh, uh, she, she, when she was doing interviews later, she was reflecting on the, the strange queer theory aspects of all these naked men having to jack themselves off so they could be ready for her cunt. And she, <laughs> and she directed a, a movie herself, which was extremely strange and conceptual, and in which she intercut scenes of her um, getting, um, you know, uh, 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 having sex with her, scenes of her chopping up chickens and cackling and wearing big big Asian glasses. So she, she was a very complex, very intellectual figure. She, she really was an, an uh, she really was an artist. Um, and she, it's okay, sorry yeah. to interject. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, not sorry to interject. Uh, yeah, maybe there's one more quick question. Uh, I was thinking that the reference to Singapore politics throughout the play, like, do you think uh, in Singapore theatre, a lot of the theatre I see here, tends to use uh, like very strong, like quite didactic uh, subject matter about issues here. So I saw that coming into the play quite a bit. And so I was wondering about a short response. Do you think, do you think the crowd is responsive to it? Or the, the, cause maybe the artists already know about such issues. Or do you think, uh, do you think maybe it's overbearing or generally? And, and also why, why do you still feel the need to bring it into such a play, yeah. Actually, I think a lot of the art, a lot, a lot of the political comments were very unsubtly done. Um, I, yeah, I could have written it, uh, written that stuff more gracefully. But uh, one of the main things I, I, when I looked at her life, I saw her being very much of a product of Singapore, Singapore politics and uh, policies towards art as well as towards education. I mean, her parents were. Chinese, her, ch her parents were actually Chinese language uh, theatre practitioners until they right. uh, they quit, and I saw that as you know happening at the same time as uh, Kuo Pao Kun and and uh, being jailed under grounds of supposed communism, and uh, and she she herself uh, left Singapore because she um, there were, wasn't a positive uh, conducive atmosphere for art, and she later and she was doing performance art, which was banned at the say at the time. Right. So I mean, I, I felt this was a very this was a side of her that I really felt was important to explain, uh, to lay out, and actually explain to people who didn't know about the yeah. con the artistic context um, of what was going on. Still, I um, I, re I realized that a lot of um, a lot of the references to Amanda Heng and Lin Lu were actually lost on the audience since we had a big non-art audience in the crowd. But uh, but one motif I had was the performance of Joseph Ng, which happened oh, about a year before her gangbang. Right. And uh, so, and I thought that, well, because that was uh, played up by the new paper in, in a similar scandalous fashion, 
it was it would actually serve as a as an anchor point to talk about you know what what the idea of um, of acceptable and unacceptable what what is acceptable and unacceptable deviant behavior yeah. you know I, well ideas in in Singapore life I mean I I really do see you know Annabelle Chong not as this figure telling us that we should all do gangbangs but as this figure telling us that we should have a broader idea of what of the ways in which we can lead our lives okay okay I think that's great thank you very much um this is Simon Peter hang, uh, signing out and here we are Ni Sheng Noel Chia yeah thank you for your contributions very much okay bye bye <laughs>
pornographic history that we know of, huh? I don't know, maybe she does pornographic web design. <laughs> yeah, but that is if we are like stereotyping her. So you know what's what's with Singaporeans and always associating Annabelle Chong with with pornography, man? It's the media. It's, it's the only thing that they're interested in. Yeah, so man, we should really think of Annabelle Chong. I mean, it's cool to do a play about Annabelle Chong having sex with 251 people. Maybe we should do a play about her designing websites. Exactly, you know, this is like really true to the what she is according to web archive, you know. She seems to be now a web designer that specializes in ASP.NET, C, C database development and stuff like that, which is still very relevant in web design today. Annabelle Chong. Annabelle Chong. And about Chong. And about Chong and borderline obsessiveness. Yeah. <laughs> and for those of you viewing the podcast, you'll be seeing flashes of Annabelle Chong flashing across the screen. We hope you enjoy it. Yeah. We we enjoy putting it together. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Welcome back. So hope you really enjoyed all this this episode about Annabelle Chong and stuff. Very verbose interview and I hope it was an enlightening discussion. Yeah, I think it's enlightening. Well, more comments from you folks out there. Email us at admin at dangermuseum.com. Dangermuseum.com. So, um, so this is me, Tian. Bruce. So. Signing off. In London. In London. London. The Wire is Danger Museum Project, presented by ArtSingapore.org, featuring Simon Peter, Bruce Quack, Woon Tian Wei, and guest interviewer Noel Cha. This episode is supported by Silver Foundation and P10. Thank you for listening.